reverse the game breaks, no case, you know it up, put on more steam. Protect our kickers, our quarterback, our lead, our ball game. All obstacles, lock, cut, side, do the game, tap, this win it. Press you again, here for the first play. Can't fight, you never see you next. Rocky Top! <laughs> I know everybody thinks it's cliche, but you know, I truly believe in my heart, you know, that we all are blessed just to have the opportunity to be at the University of Tennessee. You know, we have, you know, we've had some guys in the past that always felt like Tennessee was blessed to have us. You know, and, and that's not the case, you know. So these guys, I think they're believing in what we're doing, how we're doing things, that they understand is bigger than us as individuals. It's bigger than me as Coach G. It's bigger than Coach Banks. It's bigger than Coach Eck. You know, it's bigger than any one of them. You know, it begins with the T and ends with the T. Yeah, you know, again, I think we, we, we should really have the best defensive line in the country. You know, I feel really good about our depth that we're building. Um, I feel really strongly about, you know, their attitude and the determination that those guys have played with. You know, and again, I'm not even talking as much about football, just great guys. You know, they're great human beings and, you know, they've really worked hard. And, you know, as coaches, we want to see guys develop and reach their full potential. 99% of the people in this world want to be great. Would you agree with that? Yeah, they're called wannabes. 1% work to be great. Drop the mic, come out. <laughs> no, I, I know what I came here to do, and um, you know it's my job to go and uh, get that done. Um, Tony Swanson says, "SJD, will you ever go back on the Talking Balls Network?" Ooh, I like Talking Balls. I think that's Boogie Bentley running the show over there, man. That's a, he's he's awesome at what he does. We actually were trying to get on his show during their stream for charity. Ended up not happening just by nature of the schedules conflicting. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we'll make that happen here in the near future. Boogie does an awesome job, and they do they do an awesome job over there on that platform. So yeah, without question, without cool. question. Tennessee. Ethan Utley had over 40 offers. He plans to make a decision prior to those official visits this summer. Welcome. Oh my gosh, I sound like Kermit the Frog. Welcome to the Talking Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley, joined by Coach Shea. That's the man of the hour, Ethan Utley. We're going to take you all the way up to his live commitment. So come on in, sit down. Maybe we'll talk a little film. Maybe we'll talk some scouting reports. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk about the narrative 
I'm feeling pretty confident. I think this is one we're going to be celebrating at the end of the night. Uh, Coach Shea, how are we feeling, brother? You've been uh, traveling. You've been uh, flying the friendly skies, uh, spending some time with family. But you're back. You're back in the saddle, ready to talk a little crouton. Yeah, yeah, ready to talk some crouton. Um, <clears throat> good trip, uh, short trip. Maybe uh, flew a little too close to to, the, to your people's boogies because – my throat's a little sore too, so mm. uh, 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 I don't know if it was you or Kaner coughing at me uh, all the way from Tennessee to Indianapolis, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, we'll get through it. But I feel good, a little tired because I was up at like you know 4 a.m. this morning, uh, running around because I was on on that weird time zone y'all exist in. But uh, the only time yeah. zone, <laughs> yeah. But I feel good, man. Uh, uh, ready to dive into this and. Um, Hopefully, Ethan uh, is about to come home. Feeling pretty confident, man. Well, we'll kind of get into it. We'll break it down. We'll go through it. Uh, guys, do us a favor. Come on in. Sit down. Pull up a chair. Crack open a beer. It's Thursday. It's Thursday, but you can still – I'm giving you guys permission. I'm giving you guys permission to crack open a beer on a Thursday night. Have a good time. Watch Ethan Utley make his decision. We're going to take you all the way up to it. He's going to commit at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to stream it right here on the channel, so you'll, ha you'll have an opportunity to see that. You don't have to go somewhere else and look for it. We will share it right here on the channel. But smash the thumbs up for us. That's easy. Share this thing out. Put it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Let somebody know we're live. If it's your first time here, uh, we welcome you to the Talking Balls Network. We're, we're not experts here. We're not insiders. We're not media. We're the alternative. We are the alternative. We are the voice of the voiceless. Uh, this this show is proof that fans can gather together and talk Tennessee football and take over Tennessee media. That's what we're doing here on the Talking Balls Network. Got a great cast and crew. Uh, whether that's Coach Jay or last you know last night we had Coach Rice in the house. Dauber was in the house. Great. Uh, we work. also had Rocky Top Tom. Man, uh, good times having him on the show last night. Uh, so come on in, hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. Uh, but the man of the hour, Ethan Utley, we're going to be taking you all the way up to that decision. A four-star defensive lineman, Coach Jay. Uh, we've done a film breakdown on him. I'm st man, I'm 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 all out of sorts. I had us on the intro when I was trying to play his video. Now we're out. I'm all messed up. But uh, how big of a prospect is is Ethan Utley? And shout out to Nelson in the chat. We were talking earlier this morning about it. Not a whole lot of people seem to be excited about Ethan Utley. He's a huge prospect for Tennessee. Huge target. Priority target. A uh, huge target. Um, you know, when me and uh, Coach Rice were going to do our original uh, versus series on the film breakdown, you know, um, I really wrestled with Ethan. He was one of the, you know, two two tree names that I was wrestling with. Uh, decided to open the film breakdown season up with him, I think, if you recall, uh, you know, because I thought very highly of him. I could have easily, you know, chosen him is the number one in-state kid but um uh, a great kid you know plays with plays with great bend occupies gaps well um you know can stunt uh can hook can fly in the gaps that uh he normally shouldn't be in uh really a true a to c gap player if you need him to be so uh i love it man you can play that zero technique to that five technique uh you got a place in and really any defensive uh, coaches, um, you know, um, uh, ammo bag there. So uh, I think it's going to be awesome if we can pull him in. And, hey, man, look at this defensive line we have mm. already, right? And and this is just the next uh, bullet in the clip, right? Because we are absolutely loaded at this position and would love to see Ethan Utley uh, you know, play alongside with Jordan Ross. Uh, that's going to be fun to see. I think that's going to be kind of like uh, uh, watching watching Hobbs play with, um, uh, you know, some of these great defense ends come through as well. You know, we were talking about it last night, how much talent is on that defensive line. And, and right before we went live, man, I sat down and watched Rodney Garner's, you know, per media appearance. I think it was after practice four, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like any time Rodney Garner's in front of a microphone, pull up a chair, sit down, and get get the popcorn out because he's going to drop some bangers. And right out of the gate, Brent Hubbs is like, what do you think about Tim Banks saying that you've got the best defensive line in the country? And he comes out firing on all cylinders. He's like, well, I didn't know he said that. Uh, 
we're, we're not giving anything. We've got to go out and prove it. We've not proven anything yet. Like, he's acting like we're starting from rock bottom. we got to go out and prove it. And, and then, you know, later in the interview, somebody asked him about, you know, some of these upperclassmen, they're guaranteed playing time. He's like, ho, ho, ho. Where did you hear that? Nobody's guaranteed anything. And I think this coaching staff in their media appearances, and we've talked it to death on this channel, whether it's you, Coach Rice, coaches use media appearances as a way to coach up players because they know it's going to get back to them. And, and so they're, they're, they're plugging and promoting freshmen to say, hey, you upperclassmen, you better come put in the work uh, or else you're going to get passed by. Let me, uh, let me see who's in the, the chat. Let's see who's hanging out with us tonight. Uh, Douglas is here. What's up, Douglas Graham? Uh, Cody Alexander is here, says thank y'all. Uh, is it your birthday, Cody? Somebody's got a birthday in the chat, uh, and I missed it. Uh, Casey Greer is here. What's up, Boogie? Coach G done locked this boy up. We're going to talk about that relationship with Coach G coming up here in just a minute, man. I'm excited about it. Balls Girl is here, says what's up, everyone? Uh, good to see you in the chat. Uh, Jason is here as well. Uh, J4 drinking some Coors Light tonight. We'll have one on me, brother. Enjoy it. Uh, who else we got? Uh, James is in the house. Chuck Maines is here. What's up, brother? Uh, Smokey Balls is here. Ball fan for life is in the house. Uh, Tony Swanson is here saying go Big Orange. Gary Harper also saying the same thing. Uh, guys, put in the chat. How we feeling right now leading up to the commitment of Ethan Utley? Uh, if you're feeling balls, put it in the chat. You feeling Texas? You a little worried about Texas? Uh, how you guys feeling? Put it in the chat. I want to see what you guys think. Uh, Angry Titan becomes a member of the channel. He found out his membership expired. Uh, I told him that I had heard that that makes you a Gator fan. He's the one that says that. I didn't say it. He said it. So he quickly updated his membership. Guys, you can join the channel as well. If you like what we do around here, hit the join button down below. It's a dollar. You can support us for $1 a month. We're doing fan call-in shows every Sunday throughout spring camp. You guys get to come on, hang out. And uh, talk some Tennessee football. So we're going to do that again coming up on Sunday. Uh, Keith for five. Nothing, all he says is Dorfee. A tip in the tip jar. Keith, we appreciate that, man. We are. We talk about being for the fans, by the fans. We're also fan funded. We could not do this uh, without people like Keith. So shout out to Keith for the super chat. Uh, Jody Wooten been a member for 27 months. That's a lot of support, brother. We appreciate it. Can't wait for another big time defensive commitment. Well, buckle up, because I think it's coming your way. Uh, Derek Chappell for 10, Dorfee, and for Coach Jay, coffee. When he do film study on potential recruits for Tennessee, uh, hardest working appreciate man here. That. He works harder than I do. I don't know I don't know how I set I, that up, but I'm, I'm – I, I'm, I appreciate coffee. Nice <clears throat> nice dark roast. Mm. I'll take it. Thank mm. you. Thank what you. about a medium thank roast? You, you. What do you think about butter in your coffee? No, no butter. Um, I'm good on butter. Maybe a little cream if I'm if I'm feeling you know, I don't know, weird or something. But but usually just uh, take black, it how it is, man. Just there like you go. Black coffee there like it go. was intended to be. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. John Watts for five says throat lozenge donation. I need more. I need oh, more. Yeah. Uh, look. There's no days off around here. Uh, but mm -hmm. shout out John for the super chat. We appreciate it. Timothy McGee for five. Hey, I'm back. Less option routes, more timing routes. Good to see Timothy in the chat. Guys, don't go away. Come hang out. Talk spring camp. Talk uh, recruiting. We appreciate it. Ball fan for life for two. Hope you feel better. Uh, soon, the breakdown champ. By the way, the the belt, the the world championship is going in the mail sooner rather than later. It's, it's going to get shipped out to Coach Jay. Got a big showdown. Coach Jay versus Rocky Top Tom coming up in April. Spoiler alert. I think you're going to defend the crown. I think do, we have a, do we have a fight night yet? We don't have a date set, but I think what's going to happen is you're going to bury Rocky Top Tom. And then I think in, in, in May, we're going to have Rocky Top Tom go against Coach Rice for the number one contendership, and the winner's going to get a shot at you. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we're, we're I'll tell you, I'll tell you what real quick, though, real quick. I'll tell you what, Rocky Top Tom, man, the second he found out, he went in like I must have had, you know, 40, 50 Twitter conversations with him. What do you think of this? Have you seen this film? What did it do? He was like, he's working, picking my brain. Then I got thinking, I was like, wait a minute, should I be telling him all this information? Like he's maybe, working. Maybe I need to shut up a little more. Maybe, maybe Rocky top Tom's being a little, uh, little sneaky. I, I got my eye on you, Tom. I got my eye on you. We were I'm talking recruiting. Now. We were talking recruiting last night. And, and, and I said, Tom, have you, have you kept up with Ethan Utley at all? Nope. I'm just looking at offensive linemen. Uh, I was like, oh, it's going to get interesting. Uh, shout, out to, 
Shout out to Deb. <laughs> uh, she becomes a member of the channel. We appreciate that support. VFL Logan for 10. Uh, Sup, boys? I need this one like Ricky needs another Elite Eight appearance. Uh, sorry, couldn't help myself, but for reals, GBO, our time is here. Hashtag everything school. I hope I hope the basketball team takes care of business mm. tomorrow night. I can't stay up. I can't stay up till midnight to watch a basketball game, so we're not doing a watch party. Uh, but uh, if they make it to the Elite Eight, we'll try to do that. Mm. All right, uh, let's talk about the man of the hour. Let's pull up Ethan Utley, scheduled to make his commitment at 730. <clears throat> we're about 29 minutes away from that. We're going to be streaming it live. Y'all don't have to go anywhere. We'll have it covered right here on the channel. We'll share his Instagram feed when it goes live. The Dub Daddy for 10 says, keep up the great work, Boogie. I watch all of your videos, sir. My morning routine. Thank you for all that you do, sir. Well, thank you, Dub Daddy. We appreciate the super chat, uh, and thank you for the support. Ron the Don's like, nope, I'm going to be at the top. I feel like I almost sound like Ron the Don as I'm losing my voice. I start to sound more <laughs> like maybe I'm I'm like transitioning into Ron the Don. I'm going to be on here saying it feels like 98. I'll be singing it. I don't know. I don't know. But Ron the Don for 20, that ain't cheap. That's an orange boy. We got to roll around here. You drop an orange boy, we got to play the clip. Rocky Town! <laughs> Shout out Ron the Don, biggest donation of the night. Drops a $20 super chat. I'll update the leaderboard. Uh, we appreciate you, brother. Says, okay, let's get this party started. Door fee, boom, boom, room fee, hotty, hot toddy, wait, hot toddy fee, gargle, wait, and rise. Boogie, you sound better. That's a sign we are going to kick some high. Let's go. GBO time. Shout out we Ron go. the Don. Ron the Don's been drinking since about 6 o'clock this morning. We appreciate you, brother. Uh, Ethan Utley, the man of the hour, four-star prospect, in-state prospect, 6'3 and a half, 275 out of Nashville. Uh, he's a top 200 prospect. You know, I, I was talking earlier about how me and Nelson were saying, I don't think a lot of people understand how big of a prospect he is. Coach Jay, we did a film breakdown on him. Uh, you guys go back and watch that. After, after he commits to Tennessee, you go back to the playlist. You watch the film breakdown on Ethan Utley, and uh, you'll you'll enjoy that. But, uh, Coach, what do you think about his game? Just overall, you've watched a lot of film on him. Uh, what do you think about him as a player, as a prospect? He's He's got a large, large arsenal uh, of um, pass rushing moves, right? He's got all the moves in his bag. He can dip and rip. He can swim. He can push, pull. Uh, he can bull rush you. Uh, he's got really powerful hands inside, which I love. I, I've noticed a theme with defensive tackles. Coach Gardner likes quick, powerful hands inside. Think uh, Omar Norman Lot. When you see uh, Lot play this year, watch how quick and powerful he punches and grabs inside, pushes and pulls and steers where he wants to go. Extremely elite, powerful hands. And then the final thing, uh, that Coach G likes that Ethan does really, really well. He is a very, very smooth and fast. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, fast in in his lateral moves, right? He can get down that line quickly. Um, like I said earlier, he can pop C gap to A gap really, really quick. It makes him a, a nightmare to guard when he's rushing the pass. And um, on those downs that are kind of running downs, where the offense runs a pass play, that's where he really shines is in those moments. <clears throat> he uh, put out his top five back on Christmas Day, Michigan, Oklahoma, Syracuse, Tennessee, and Texas. Uh, here's what he had to say about every school. Texas, the unity, and up they are on. Like, I don't understand. And they are on while heading into the SEC. The unity and up. They are on while heading into the SEC. Uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma's in the same boat as Texas with the move to the SEC. You see a theme here, Coach Jay? He keeps talking about the SEC, and he's talking about teams that aren't in the SEC. There's only one team in his top five that is actually in the SEC. You can talk about Texas. You can talk about what shade of orange. Well, Coach uh, Heupel will tell you this. With Texas coming into the league now, which school has the real claim to being able to call itself UT? There's only one real UT, one right shade of orange. I love, I love the, I love the wink at the end. He's like, I got to take a shot, but here's a wink, wink. Uh, Syracuse, I think Syracuse was in the mix because the 
defensive line coach from Texas A&M, uh, went to Syracuse. They they got pretty hot and heavy recruiting defensive linemen. He said the winning culture the team acquired with Coach Brown and Coach E is outstanding. Uh, they're going to turn the program around. Michigan, the culture and development at Michigan are top-notch. Coach Moore is one of the best coaches in the country. And then he goes on to Tennessee. The comfort level being probably the best and the consistent recruiting every day is what stands out for them. And then an opportunity to be Coach – I love this quote. Coach Garner's cover kid for the line of scrimmage is a great opportunity. You know, I think, you know, there was a lot of buzz around Texas the last week or so. And then, you know, Volquist kind of put out – Coach Garner put on more steam, and that kind of swayed Ethan Utley. And every everybody right now going into the commitment, a lot of people saying Tennessee's out front. Tennessee's out front. How, 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 how big is Rodney Garner for Tim Banks? When you look at the overall defense, right, and how they get better year after year, how much of that is Rodney Garner? <clears throat> a, a lot of it is Rodney Gardner. I think a lot of it is Rodney's evaluation of these kids at the high school level. And then, you know, that we always talk about it, right? The two big pieces uh, of recruiting uh, num- or building a good team, I should say. One is evaluation and then recruiting them and getting them in the boat, right? But the second part is development. And you really can't you really can't have one without the other unless you run into that freak kid, right? You got to have a good eval on a kid, even if he's undervalued, and, and make sure you know you got your base level of clay there that you're building on a strong uh, foundation. But then you got to develop him. And man, ha- has he ever developed him since he's been here? I mean, you think about our defensive line. I mean, pretty much from the the word jump, uh, we had a defense that was really struggling to stop the run. And they instantly like became top five defense against the run with Rodney Gardner. And then that pass rush element, you know, finally started <clears throat> uh, kicking into gear over the last year. But you watch them. They're just extremely, extremely well coached uh, off the line of scrimmage. Uh, they're really quick off the ball. You don't see a lot of false steps out of them. Uh, you see them sinking their hips really well. Just all those little things that you look for in a well-coached defensive line, leap off the page when you watch them in practice. It's it's incredible to see um, uh, a coach uh, as good as that working at such a high level like that. Because I'll tell you what, guys, I've been watching every spring bit of film I can get my, my little grubby hands on, and that defensive line, I mean, I know they're getting uh, a lot of praise, and they should, because um, they're going to be causing some problems here in a couple months. Let me catch up with you guys in the chat. We're about uh, 22 minutes away from the decision. We're going to take you all the way up to that decision. We're going to share it. We're going to show it right here live on the Talking Balls Network uh, so you don't have to go anywhere. Make sure you guys do smash the thumbs up, share out the link. If it's your first time here, uh, think about subscribing, man. We make videos every day. We talk college football all day, every day, right here on the Talking Vols Network. Once we get into the fall, that's when business really picks up. We do morning shows on Monday and Friday. Uh, we do post game shows. We do tailgate shows right before the games. That's where you guys, the audience, the members of the channel, get to come on, hang out. Uh, it's man, it's like hanging out with your boys on the back deck and girls. There's a lot of ladies here in the chat at the Talking Vols Network, which I'm I appreciate you ladies as well. But we're gonna hang out. We're gonna talk Tennessee football. We we don't have a narrative. Uh, we don't have a boss. Us. There's no restrictions. We can say and do whatever we want. That's the beautiful thing about the Talking Balls Network. So if you like that dynamic, that anti-establishment for the fans, by the fans, uh, think about subscribing. Click that bell for notification, all that good stuff. Good old Nate Pruitt for 10 says, Cover Charge Boogie. Howdy, Coach Jay. God bless and go Vols. Good to see good old Nate Pruitt in the chat. Jake Riggins, uh, been a member for 34 months. That's a long time, brother. We appreciate that support. Uh, Bob is back. Bob called in sick to work tonight. Just for this. He's like, I'm, I'm not going to work. I'm, I'm a little under the weather. I need to see Ethan Utley uh, commit. He says, go Big Orange. I may have been absent, but I'm always with the balls in spirit. Shout out, Bob. We appreciate you, brother. Uh, Michelle drops a $25 super chat. Uh, the ultimate lurker. She's never going to speak. She's just going to play an orange voice. So we'll do it. Rocky time! <laughs> Shout out to Michelle, top donation of the night. We appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat. Eric Jones, 
36 months as a member. We appreciate it. What's up, Boogie and Coach Jay? Great to be a Vol fan right now. Tennessee going to beat Creighton and get to the Elite Eight. And Ethan Utley is a Vol. I like the way you think, Eric. Uh, Bill Kell for 10. Go Big Orange from you know, Satasota. Is that how you say it? Satasota? And on my way back to Knoxville tonight. Well, shout out, Bill. Appreciate the super chat, brother. Thank you for dropping in, and thank you uh, for your support. Uh, Cody's been a member for 36 months. So it's just a monthly plug. Join the channel, guys. It's only a dollar. Man, there is strength in numbers. 25,000 subscribers. Think about hitting that join button uh, for $1. And shout out to Cody. He's an OG. Been a member for a long time. We appreciate it, brother. Volfan25 for 10. Hello, Boogie and Coach Jay. 100% excited for Tennessee football. GBO, and thank you both for everything that you do. Thank you, Volfan25, for the super chat. We appreciate it. Uh, Russell Moorfield, been a member for 35 months. Appreciate that support. Uh, let's get another one in the boat. David Berg has been a member for 18 months. Uh, shout out to all you members, man. You guys pay the bills around here during the offseason, and I am grateful for that. Let's let's change gears for just a second, Coach. Still, still in the world of recruiting, but when we talk about Ethan Utley, number four ranked player in the state of Tennessee, it's cliche, right? We say it all the time. You got to lock down the state. You got to put up a board. You got to keep your big in-state kids in state. But when you pull up the class of 25, you go look at the industry rankings. Uh, you got George at the top, already already committed. You got Cameron Sparks at number three. Terion Grant, we did a film breakdown on him. Great kid. We questioned some things, right? Is there some issues, off-the-field issues, attitude issues? What is it with Terion Grant? He's a baller. You, you prove that in the film breakdown. Uh, but then you go on down, top five, Cam Sparks, Vol, Ethan Utley, feeling confident, Vol, Rodarius Jackson, this is fake news. Do you buy this? Do you believe Ole Miss? The, and then, look, the on three recruiting prediction machine is not always accurate. I don't think Ole Miss leads for Rodarius Jackson. Nah, no, nah, I think he'll end up a Vol. So, um, and come on, man, like the quarterbacks are here, right? That, that's where the five stars are. We talked about it. The kid's going to want to go play with the baller, uh, come to Tennessee. So you, you want to play with a, a one-year transfer? Go play with Lane Kiffin. So you, you look at the top six guys. George, already in the boat. Terion Grant, committed to Purdue. Does that flip? Does that change? I don't know. And I think that's a Tennessee thing. I think that is a Tennessee thing passing on Grant. So say what you will. Did they miss? Did they not? I don't know. We'll find out eventually. Cam Sparks, okay. Ethan Utley, Rodarius Jackson, Jalen Morgan. So five out of the top six. Pretty dang good for locking down the state uh, with Josh Heupel. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome if you can do that, right? We just have not been doing that in the past. Um, not that we haven't gotten our kids, right? But you want to net all those guys you can. Uh, in the boat, you know, you're going to hit on multiple of them. I know, uh, you know, you guys were talking about it bit the other night, uh, but it gets a little tiring, right? When you hear, when you hear a kid's name getting called who was in the end zone or making a good play or, you know, at another school dominating, and you can think back to that commitment day and, and when he put on another hat or something, it just kind of, kind of burns you a little more, kind of chaps you a little more. And for us recruiting junkies, you know, what's one of the first things you do, right? You go in and you look up the in-state kids, right? Before recruit that that year starts and you look up all the in-state kids and you you want to say, hey, we're, we're going to get whichever one of these we want, right? And that hasn't always been the case in the past. So, um, man, if we can start wrapping up, you know, our pick of the litter every time in, in the class, huge, man huge man because then you can build outward uh and, and you know it's not like california where you're kind of out on an island maybe the cali kids you know some of the texas kids some of the washington kids but i feel like in that area you know you get to know a lot more of the georgia kids a lot more of the north carolina kids you know a lot more of those surrounding communities so uh the recruiting reach can uh be pretty expanded through the southeastern region I'm going to give a shout-out to Bob. Bob, oh, White Lightning, up, Bob? gifted five talking Vols memberships. And you know what the great thing is? Tim Morgan got one. Till Valhalla, regular listener, got one. Dan Porter, awesome. Wayne Malone, Cody Pope, all got free memberships. You know who didn't? Dumbass Daryl. Dumbass Daryl didn't get a free <laughs> membership. 
And I love hey, him. He's here because he love loves Darryl. us, and he can't get enough. I love you too, Daryl. <laughs> but, oh, I'm so glad that dumbass Daryl didn't get a free membership. But shout out to Bob uh, for uh, for gifting those memberships, man. That that ain't cheap. That's very generous, Bob. We appreciate it. Uh, Randy Payne also becomes a member of the channel. Shout out, Randy. We appreciate you, brother. Uh, Dakota, been a member for 24 months, two years. I never know what to do with this, but here you go, by the way. Join the channel at the $10 tier. That's the best tier. GBO, that makes you elite. You see this shirt I'm wearing? It says elite. You want to be elite? That's the $10 tier. Shout out to Dakota. He's a longtime uh, Talking Vols faithful fan. Uh, Vol fan 25 member for two months. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Nate Pruitt for five. Uh, come on, guys and gals, 500 plus watching. Close the chat. He said, close down the chat and smash the thumbs up. That's It's quick, free, and easy. We would appreciate it. Uh, shout out, Nate. Shout out to everybody that's dropping the super chats, uh, supporting the channel. We, we appreciate uh, you guys. Let's take a little break. We're about 14 minutes away. We're about 14 minutes away from Ethan Utley going live, making his decision. We're going to share it right here on, on, the, on, the, on the channel. You don't, you don't got to go anywhere and go find it. Uh, we're going to share it. We're going to show it off. Uh, we're going to hopefully be celebrating. Uh, but, Coach, yeah, I wanted to ask you because last night, last night we, we did a live stream and we talked about scrimmage number one, uh, some guys making plays. I, I know you were – Spending some time with your brother, right? And that's awesome. I'm glad you got to go spend some time with family, take some time off. Uh, but I know you were also reading the news and the notes. Uh, any takeaways from scrimmage number one? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I like to hear uh, the good stuff out of Mike Matthews. Um, you know, I, I think Nico probably did a good job running the film, you know, running the, not the film, sorry, the, uh, the offense. Um, you know, usually you kind of hear about the defense dominating a game in the first scrimmage. And, and you got a little bit of that, but you, you did hear about kind of Nico operating that offense and being able to, you know, do the things we talked about and make plays out on his feet and, uh, you know, throw some really beautiful passes. But at the end of the day, it, it's spring ball and, and it's all about getting better, right? And to touch on the Cam Seldon thing too, because I know I didn't get to really talk about it. I know. Uh, you all went around the thing and and kind of went over it. But, um, it, you know, do they go into the portal? It'll be interesting to see. I kind of like our running back room, even beyond him. I, I know someone may not necessarily jump off the page initially, but it's the type of situation where I feel like the base level is there that we could develop someone to play into the position. So it will be interesting to see in which direction we would go. And, of course, uh, you know, how well Cam Selden can can recover. Uh, but, uh, for the most part, it's scrimmage. Number one, the main thing you want to do is get as much of those kids, uh, on tape as you can. So you can start fixing those things that they're not doing wrong. I know the coaches have spoken on it quite a bit, how we don't want to see players make the same mistake twice. Right. So we want to identify those mistakes and we want to correct them, get better scrimmage. Number two. Who's making those same mistakes? Who fixed it? Who who didn't you have to show it twice, right? How quickly are these young guys learning? Uh, and, and then finally, I think uh, Boo Carter probably showed some athleticism out there from what I'm seeing. Uh, that's awesome to see. Um, it's going to be an exciting year, man. I, 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 I would gander, even though not everyone was there, that it was competitive. So... I like to hear that. I like to hear that both sides are kind of fighting and getting some wins. Yeah, it sounds <clears> like the offense came out pretty quick. Uh, you know, the Mike Matthews touchdown that you mentioned, I think it, I think it was Dante Thornton. I think Nico connected with Dante Thornton over the shoulder catch, which, I, I dude, it sounds like Thornton is becoming the guy this year that we thought he could have been last year. And, look, that happens, right? You, you, it's a yeah. new offense. You're trying to learn it. You're trying to find your spot. They played him in the slot. He, he, it sounds like he was never really comfortable with that. And so, I, I man, I, I and I know it's spring camp, and we're what? Yeah. We're what, a week and a half into it? And I'm like, Thornton's the dude, man. I, I think I Thornton's will, the dude. I will say one thing. I mean, Nico really – likes tall wide receivers on the edge right like you give him a six foot four six foot three wide receiver out on the x out on the z he loves throwing that seam and if you give those wide receivers a step or they're even footed 
he's going to put it right on the money. I, I think you're going to see the return of that deep explosive ball this year. And it's going to make the running game a lot easier for this team. And I still think it's something that we can, um, you know, kind of go back to, uh, you know, once we open it up a little. But I think it will be open with the senior offensive line anyway, which is kind of why I'm not as worried about it, is I think, A, you have Nico to threaten them with his feet in a new way that Joe Milton wasn't quite doing. And then number two, I think the passing game is going to be so much more explosive that it will help open up holes. And then third, you have that, that old offensive line that could, that can pop those holes open. So I think it's going to be a, a problem that's solved on three different levels. Yeah, and it's it, that's what the you know you're talking about the outside. That sounds like what I know. That's what the Mike Matthews touchdown was, but that wasn't Nico. But uh, oh, I didn't read how it happened actually because I've been kind of you know spotty with with being on the road. I just know he had a long one. I didn't see it was a was it a throw. Yeah, Mike Matthews, the touchdown pass from him was Gaston Moore. Okay. Uh, but, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dante Thornton had a Thornton one. one. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like it was on the outside and it was picture perfect over the shoulder. But what excites me is not the throw. I know Nico's going to make the throw. I'm not doubting that. I like, mm. I know he's going to put the ball where it needs to be. I'm excited about Dante Thornton looking over the shoulder and hauling it in and going and making a touchdown. And then yeah. it sounds like the defense settled in. And, and you know, that's what you want to hear, man. A little back and forth. Uh, that, that's 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 what you want to hear in spring camp. Uh, Wayne drops a $10 super chat. Uh, nothing to say, just a tip in the old tip jar. We appreciate you, Wayne. Uh, thank you for the support. We are about eight minutes away. We're eight minutes away from the man of the hour. That is Ethan Utley going to be making his decision uh, coming up at 7.30, we're going to share the live stream, let you guys see it uh, right here on the channel. Uh, he dropped his top five again back on Christmas Day. He's going to choose between Michigan, Oklahoma, Syracuse, Tennessee, and Texas. Uh, sounds like there was a lot of Tennessee and Texas down the stretch. Tennessee seemed to pull away the last week or so. I'm feeling confident, man. Tennessee, they've hosted him uh I think seven times since October of 2021, most recently back in February for Junior Day. Uh, he was here for the Texas A&M game. He was here for the George game last year. Got a great relationship with Coach Garner. His mom, his mom has known Coach G since the early 90s. So there is that family connection. Uh, let's do, uh, you've already talked about him, what, what you think of him as a player. So I'll, I'll read off the scouting report from On3. He says, powerful interior defensive lineman who plays with violence and tenacity at the point of attack. Excellent use of length in order to initiate contact against offensive linemen. Scraps and claws consistently. Never gives up when engaged with blockers. Uh, rarely loses the battle of leverage due to hand usage and pad level. Impressive bend for a player of his stature. Measured in at nearly 6'4", 275 during summer visits. Uh, strong testing in the agility and explosive drills for the position during spring camp circuit. Uh, raw power translates to the track and field as well. He threw a 130.3 in the discus during his sophomore track and field season. High floor prospect who will develop the nuances as a pass rusher uh, with collegiate coaching and reps. What do you think about that scouting report compared to what you, you see on, on tape yourself? Yeah, I mean, some of the things are just saying in a different way, you know, like good bend, long, uh, you know, sinks his hip well, which we're talking about. But uh, I I liked everything they said. Um, yeah, here picking it up. Um, it almost looks like a spring game or something. But you see how he can just kind of bend his hip and dip around an offensive tackle doesn't have the speed to deal with him. Uh, playing a little five technique there. So as we talked about before, they'll move him around a little playing on the edge again against trips uh you know had to deal with a a, a guard and a running back trying to block him and he can kind of he could have ran through those kids but he kind of just sinks sinks through them dips around them uh you know here we see him kind of just maintaining his gap um he, he is a patient football player in the defensive line as well which i really love a lot of players will get overzealous and want to attack the quarterback right away. Ethan isn't afraid to sit in that gap and sit in there violently and maintain it. We talk about that quite a bit as well, right? Here he's being patient. He's got backside, right? And then when the quarterback makes a decision to run, he's able to get there. If he over pursues right there and gets washed, 
his linebacker was pulled out the wide by the wide receiver on the last play. So if that quarterback goes, he's the only line of defense there, and you're going to have a 30-yard gain. So being patient when you're on that weak side defensive end is very important. We saw it a lot this past year. Uh, we talk about it off the opposite of James Pierce. It happened against Florida. It happened against Missouri. Uh, we'd let that weak side um, uh, defensive end kind of get pulled in too deep, and they would run underneath him. Uh, Ethan is great at stopping that when they put him uh, in that kind of like weak side defense end or, or, or jack type position. But I think his strong suit is in the inside, and it's where he'll be, you know, kind of when the dust settles here. See where they put him right here, right on that edge again. This defense, you know, film's kind of coming back to me slow. It's been a while. That three, three, five. You see how strong his hands are there, right? It almost like he's he's got Inspector Gadget hands, um, and he can kind of just suck a quarterback into his his vortex when he gets anywhere near him. Um, you know, the larger the player you are, you kind of have a more gravity towards you as well. It, that knife in right there was just awesome. You see how quick and explosive he got through on that last play. Beautiful, beautiful job. Um, it, you can kind of see here, if you go back and watch the film breakdown, <laughs> good Lord, after um, I, I had a job on my hands, picking a picking five plays to go over with this kid, right? There's just a lot on film. Uh, right here, we see him just beautiful. And right there, we, you know, we talk about sticking your hands up, keeping them inside. That's what we mean by violent hands. That way he can sink his hips, fill whichever gap, move his offense alignment, and go, man. That's extremely valuable. Tipping a ball, once again, that that reach that they talk about. Really athletic kid for his size. In a lot of ways, he kind of gives you Dave and Hobbs vibes, right? Uh, that, that same kind of big athletic defense alignment that could almost play in coverage when you wanted to him. I believe Hobbs did at times. Uh, and, and I think Utley has a play where he or a couple plays in, in one of his films where you see him blowing up screens out in space. Uh, there you see him just maintaining that outside gap and, and, and filling inside or outside in. Sorry. Uh, on that here, we got twins to the top of the screen, single wing set, uh, just a little counter train. He blows it up just by reading that guard step. We talk about linebackers reading the guard step a lot on this channel here. Well, you know, guess what? As a defense lineman, uh, when I'm playing inside and I just got to manage the ball carrier, I can always pull through, ride that offense lineman's hip. Nine times out of ten, he's going to take me to the ball. If I see any backside action coming, I just need to sit down, get ass deep, sit down, fly to the ball, knees to nuts, ass down, head up, wrap up, hat on the ball, and we're in business. So uh, a lot of strong stuff out of Ethan Utley, man. Uh, really great looking prospect. Uh, the kind of kid you can just see Coach Gardner is going to shape too. Mm. I'm really mm. excited about what we get out of him. Um, it's going to be awesome to see. So looking forward to it. Uh, we're about. I see people in the chat asking: Has he committed? When's he committing? What's the what's happening here? Uh, he's scheduled to go live at 7:30. We're going to share it up as soon as he goes live. We're going to share it. We're going to put it on the screen. You guys are going to have an opportunity to watch it uh, along with us. Speaking of the devil, uh, he just went live. So we'll uh, we'll share it up. We'll see what's going on, and uh, we'll go from here. Feeling pretty confident, man. I'm confident. How are you feeling, Coach? You feeling confident? Feel good. Here? Got a bug 60 in here. People on here watching it live. Uh, we got a $2 super chat from Wade. Damn, yeah, 200 off trots, off, off trots, whichever. I appreciate that, Wade. Shout out, Wade. Uh, we got over 1,200 people watching across all platforms. We appreciate you guys. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, whether you're watching uh, on Facebook, whether you're watching on Twitter, whether you're watching on YouTube, YouTube's the place to be. Come hang out with us on YouTube, Talking Balls Network. Uh, come subscribe. Come hang out. We talk Tennessee football all day, every day. Uh, share out the link as well, guys. We would appreciate it if you would share this out. Let people know this is the place to see that commitment. We would appreciate it. I'll tell you what. I do respect. Um, you can't really see under his sweatshirt at all what color he's wearing. You know, does he have a burn orange under there? Is it is it the correct color orange under there? A lot of players give out give away the coat. Like, I mean, you know, all of it, so, uh, keep, keep it under wrap. 
internet. Oh, okay. We gonna be on the internet. Turn that phone right there. Okay. I was about to say, where's Boogie? You, can you call him right now? But I can't let him. So you want to be on the internet too? Yes, no. Hi. Hi. Turn that phone. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I wish I could turn it for <laughs> Oh, spoiler alert. A Tennessee recruit reached out to me today. Reached out to me today. What's the deal with it? Oh, he knows way soon. I, I, I said, hey, man, you uh, ever think about doing your commitment live on the Talk of Balls Network? Oh, that's, a, that's a work in progress. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. And, uh, it's been a long journey, you know. Still got one more year of high school football, and uh, I'm ready to get after it. But I'm ready to make my decision for my 17th birthday. And so, uh, you know, go ahead. Y'all see this masterpiece made by Bryce. Oh, is he gonna play a video? Is my voice gonna be in it, Coach Jay? Oh. Okay. Near football. Ever since I was five years old, I always had a dream of playing at the highest level of the game in the National Football League. Scott saying there's no doing it. I didn't realize all the game had to offer until it became an escape, peace, a sense of the The excitement the game brings me every time yep. I step up to the field is indescribable and surreal to any children I've ever seen. I'm going to thank my friends, teammates, and coaches. Uh, you know, the best version of myself. I would be working hard every single day. I would like to thank my brother EJ for being my first hero, inspiration, and motivation, and teaching me the true meaning of God. I would like to thank my mom. She is second to none of my anchor through every day. I would like to thank her for being my number one supporter and motivator through this whole process. I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, none of this would be possible. And I would like to thank him for keeping me blessed and highly favored throughout this whole process. I would like to thank every school that has taken the time out of their daily lives for me. This has been like a short of a dream come true. I love the game of football so much. I will pay it back for him by being a champion in the classroom and a warrior on football. Out of Nashville, oh, I recognize that voice. Rocky Top. Yeah. Let's go. We go. Let's go, boy. Come on. No. In the carrier. Awesome. Now let, let's not. Are you? <laughs> let's not be that. Let's not be that negative guy. But it's something. It's something I wanted to talk about before the commitment, but we ran out of time. So something I want to talk about now. Uh, do you have any issues? Today's his birthday. 18th birthday. That's why he's. You know, he, he scheduled to make the commitment today. I, I felt confident, man. I felt confident about Tennessee landing him. I think he loves Coach G. I think the relationships are there. Uh, he scheduled an official visit to Tennessee on June the 14th. He scheduled an official visit to Texas, who was said to be the runner-up that following week. Uh, if he takes that visit, does that concern you? I think this is a dude you're going to have to continue to recruit, right, from now until signing day. Does it concern you if he takes that visit to Texas on the 21st? I mean, it always concerns you a little, but, I, you know, I, I think the Vols should feel good about this one. Yeah, you're going to have to show interest to keep him, but you're also going to be sitting on a really dynamic defensive front this whole season. I mean – He's going to be watching that with uh, with wide eyes and and seeing the work that Coach G has done, that seeing the development that Coach G uh, ha has put these guys through. So I I love it, man. I think we're going to be just fine. Yeah, you got to stay on him, but he he's he's a fish. I think we can keep on the hook. That's for sure. So um, yeah, a little concerned, but but not too concerned at the same time. I'm fired up, man. I'm excited. This this is a big one, and I I know it's it's it doesn't have the star power as George, or but man, this is 
Uh, this is Coach G made this a priority. He wanted Ethan Utley. I love hearing Ethan Utley say, I'm going to come in and I'm going to be that dude. I'm going to be that dude uh-huh. on Coach G's defensive line. That that excites me. I'm fired up. What what is what what is your overall thoughts on this class of 25 moving forward? Who who are your priorities? I know David Sanders is a big one. Sounds like Clemson is in that thing deep. Uh Tennessee has a shot. But on the flip side of that, you know, Jalen Matthews is a dude that kind of came out of nowhere and when he was tweeting out after George committed, I'm like yeah, this guy, this guy's not coming to Tennessee. Uh, now I'm leaning more towards Jalen Matthews coming to Tennessee than maybe David Sanders. But uh, overall, like offensively, defensively, there's there's a lot of talent that Tennessee is in it deep on in the class of 25. Yeah, I mean, I like Sanders. I like I, I like the kid um, a, a lot. I, I think we can get two of these five star offensive linemen oh, at the end of the day. I, I really five. do. That's top five. That's not five. You get two. I really do believe that. I think we can pull down one of these five star wide receivers as well. I've talked about it. And, you know, I know there's kids, uh, you know, in state, the wide receiver, big time, you know, targets, uh, you know, Rodiers and um, I can't think of another one, Cam. uh, Can't recall his last name right now. I don't know why. Brain fart. But um, Sparks. uh, Sparks. Yeah, Cameron Sparks uh, in state. So I think you can get two more four-star wide receivers and, and one of these five-star wide receivers in the boat. Maybe we can have a good enough season to, to entice the kid from Texas that I, that I kind of slid in there to that live breakdown on round two with coach Rice and maybe not, but there's other five-star wide receivers that are interested as well. Uh, you know, there's kids in this secondary that still uh, are, are really high recruits. So I want to see us stick in this class out with many more four-star athletes, but I want to see us top it off with three three to four five-star kids as well and put that top five class together. And I think that happens with a strong season and and just continuing uh, that buzzword that we we all use around Tennessee football right now, continuing this culture that Josh Heupel has built. And, And it's one of the final pieces to the puzzle. So... Uh, those are my goals. I think we need to shoot high this year. I think it's time to shoot high. And, and and look, this class looks like we are shooting high. Like you said, you look at any position, and it is deep with recruits, right? Deep with four stars, a uh, couple five stars uh, all around at every position group. So uh, I have lofty goals. Um, we're going to need to earn it in the recruiting process, and we're going to need to earn it. Um, in between the lines on Saturday in the SEC. We appreciate you guys tuning in for this special Thursday night edition of Talking Balls. Uh, don't forget, Sunday night, we're going to be doing a fan call and show all the members of the channel get an opportunity to come on. Uh, we'll talk a little bit of this. We'll talk a little spring practice. We'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. This is your channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the night. Uh, if you're new here, I, I hope you'll think about subscribing, clicking that bell for notifications, hitting that thumbs up. That's quick, free, and easy, and we appreciate it. I'm going to send you guys out the door by letting you hear his full commitment video in the correct way, sideways, so you can see oh, it there all. You go. Uh, so for Coach Jay, shout out Coach Jay. Man, he's been traveling, been busy. Uh, shout out to him for jumping on. Coach Rice wanted to jump on. Uh, he was calling some baseball games, didn't have an opportunity to do so. But, uh, man, we got we got a strong community here. We got a strong group of dudes that want to come on here and talk Tennessee football. The sky's the limit. This fall, it's the year of the volunteers. It's the year of talking balls. We are taking this thing to the moon. Like comment subscribe we appreciate you guys we love you guys this is the talking balls network he's coach jay i'm boogie bentley go big orange dear football Ever since I was five years old, I always had a dream of playing at the highest level of the game in the National Football League. Growing up, I never realized what all the game had to offer until it became an escape, peace, and sense of enjoyment. The excitement the game brings me every time I step onto the field is indescribable and surreal to any feeling I've ever seen.
Two seven. He is a monster. That's a steady quarterback. I'd like to thank my friends, teammates, and coaches for helping me become the best version of myself and helping me work harder every single day. I would like to thank my brother EJ for being my first hero, inspiration, and motivation, and teaching me the true meaning of grind. I would like to thank my mom. She is second to none and my anchor through everything. I would like to thank her for being my number one supporter and motivator through this whole process. I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, none of this would be possible. And I would like to thank him for keeping me blessed and highly favored throughout this whole process. I would like to thank every school that has taken the time out of their days and lives to recruit me. This has been nothing short of a dream come true. I owe the game of football so much. I would pay it back for it by being a champion in the classroom and a warrior on football. Four star defensive lineman out of Nashville, Tennessee. That being said, Rocky Top. Uh -oh. Bro, that's good. I just want him to prosper and do, do good. That's what he want to do. I'm with him. Yes, man. I'm, I'm with him. That's right. So, okay. These folks folk got, got their hitty shit. No cap. Uh, uh, yeah. Nigga, every young nigga like me is saying they should never did. Uh, nigga, I ain't wasting their cheese. Came when I was in Warsaw, who was with me? And I just 